Welcome again. In this session, we're reading Luke chapter 14, verses 25 through to 33. The cost of being a follower of Jesus. And yes, there is a cost. It's not free. Not free at all. Verse 25. Now great multitudes were, go were going with him. Okay, that's Jesus. He turned and said to them. Okay, now think about it this way. I've said this many times. When you read the scriptures, when you read a passage of scripture, you got to ask, a, you know, you got to ask a variety of questions, you know. Who wrote what, what I'm reading, you know? Uh, in, the, in this passage, who is speaking? Who is the audience? You know, what is said? What is not said here? Okay? Those are just a few of the things, let alone the context and the cultural context and such. But here we have Jesus speaking to the multitudes. He's not talking to just his disciples. We read earlier in the chapter when he was talking to presumably the crowd or the guests at a fair at the Pharisee's house when he went to visit the Pharisee's house. Uh, so this is not just the guests, the, the Pharisees within the Pharisee circle, but this is the basically the general public, okay? The multitudes. Jesus turned to the multitudes, to the general public. Now this is just, again, we got to make it very clear. A lot, of, and I have to emphasize this because a lot of people they quote what Jesus said to his disciples as if it means to to the general public. No, you know what Jesus said to his disciples alone was meant for his disciples alone, not for just any Joe Blow walking down the street. Okay, what Jesus said to the multitudes, to the general public, is meant for everybody. So this again, keep in mind, this is this is a message meant for the general public. Let's read it, verse twenty six. If anyone comes to me and doesn't disregard or hate, it says here in the, in the um, notes, if you don't hate or disregard his own father, mother, wife, children, brothers and sisters, and yes, his own life also, he can't be my disciple. <gasps> Jesus is preaching hate here. What does Jesus mean here? What is he talking about? Why would he say such a thing? Because he is calling for pure followers, not people. He's not calling for divided, you know, well, uh, you know what? I'm uh, Jesus. I'm half with you and half with my wife. Jesus, I'm half with you and I'm half with my friend. Jesus, I love you, but I love my friends too. No, he's saying if you go, first of all, it, you need to put 100% of your, your attention, 100% of your resources, 100% of your strength, 100% of your mind, 100% of your love into him. And in so doing, that love will, that attention, strength, you know, the resources and, and such will be distributed as his, you know, per, uh, per his will. Uh, and not your will, okay? So he will, through his spirit and through his direction, distribute that love appropriately. So you have to direct 100%, not, not 99. Well, I got 1% love for, you know, my family member and, and 99 to Jesus. Well, that sounds very dedicated, but that's not dedicated enough according to Jesus himself. He's asking for all or none. All or not at all. There's that old saying, he's either Lord of all or he is not at all, okay? So, um, yeah, he is strictly, very strictly calling for you to really, really dedicate your life to him and him alone. He's a jealous God. Jealous God, okay? A lot of people, they, they love themselves more than they love God. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of the Lord. Although they profess the Lord, all they, although they say that, they're, that they are with God or they are okay with God because they are, you know, uh, they, uh, they are people of love, but it's the wrong type of love. It's a selfish love. It's a pleasure. It's a sensual love. It's not the love of God, okay? It's not the love of Jesus. They don't even know Jesus. You, they love their pleasure. They love their sin. They love their lifestyle more than they love Jesus. So that's why Jesus is saying you have to disregard everything. 
and, and he taught in another uh, portion of scripture, you have to die to yourself. You have to take up your cross and follow him. Taking up your cross, you know, the cross was an instrument of execution. An instrument of execution. It wasn't just a nice little pretty thing you hang around your neck or a nice little tattoo that people have. It was, a, it was an instrument of brutal and very horrible execution. One of the most painful, one of the most, what would you say? I mean, it was, it was a very, very, very horrible thing to go through. A public uh, a crucifixion, being stripped completely naked before everybody, whipped and torn apart by, by, uh, by different kinds of instruments of torture, and then hung on a, on a cross to basically to suffocate to death in your own blood or bleed to death on a cross very, very horrific. So Jesus is saying, you got to take up your cross and follow him, which means you got to lay aside all pride, lay aside all of your arrogance, lay aside all of your own lust and desires and plans and will. And you've got to say, no, it's not what I think, not what I feel is right, but it's what the scriptures actually say is right. It's not, what, it's not what I want, but it's what God wants according to the ancient scriptures. Verse 27, whoever doesn't bear his own cross and come after me can't be my, my disciple. What I've been just saying, you've got to bear the cross. Basically, it's a, it's a form of, it is one of the most cruelest ways of killing somebody that mankind has ever invented. You must bear your cross and, and, and to, to be his disciple. You must be willing to openly expose shame, your shame, to the world. You must be willing to, to, to put aside everything and everybody. Let me say it again. Everything and everybody in a real kind of death to self thing. I'm not talking about suicide at all. This is not suicide. This is denying yourself so that you can serve God and be a blessing to others. You know, whereas on the, on the opposite side, suicide is actually the most selfish thing you can do because you are denying everybody else, uh, you know, opportunity uh, for you to bless them. You're saying, God, I'm not allowing you to, to use me as a blessing in anybody's life. God, uh, I'm not allowing you to... Uh, to love me or, 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 uh, or God, I'm not allowing you to, uh, uh, to, to make me a, a blessing in my family's life, you know, and, and, and I don't care whether or not, uh, people care for me or not. Um, I don't care about my friends. I don't care about my family. I'm going to, I'm just going to, you know, commit suicide. That's the most selfish thing you can do. By the way, that is murder as well, which is very highly condemned in the eyes of God. Uh, very, very serious thing in the eyes of God, which will be judged in a very, very serious and eternal matter. Uh, and that's just what the scriptures say. Verse 28, For which of you, desiring to build a tower, doesn't first, and sit, down and, doesn't first sit down and count the cost to see if he has enough to complete it? You know, I won't go out and say, well, let's build a huge tower. Let, let's let's build the largest tower, the the highest uh, known tower in the world, and I only got like you know a few pennies in my pocket. It's it's it, it's just absolutely ridiculous to do that, and Jesus is basically saying in the same way it's ridiculous to uh, to say that I'm um, going to be a Christian or or I'm uh, I'm following Jesus if you haven't count if you didn't count the cost if you're not willing to completely lay aside all of your possessions. All of your things, be it cars, be it anything, money, be it your job, be it your reputation, anything, and all everybody else in your life. Because I, I guarantee you, if you become a real true Christian, a real true follower of God, if you really become a real true born again Christian who's really living for God and who has overcome sin in your life, then I guarantee you, you are going to be a you're going to find enemies that you thought were your loved ones, okay? Because uh, you are going, you're, there's going to be division. And I talk, I spoke about that in a, in a different, uh, in a previous teaching. You know, Jesus said he causes division, okay? So we have to be very careful uh, 
when we say that we want to be a Christian or even if we say we are a Christian, you got to know, hey, have you really become a Christian? Have you really walked the way Jesus, the way God wants you to walk? Do you eat the way Jesus wants you to eat? Do you dress the way Jesus wants you to dress? Do you talk the way Jesus wants you to talk? Or do you walk, talk, look like the world? You can't have both. Um, you got to do it the right way. You got to do it the holy way. And again, to, to live with, uh, to live for God is to live holy. Holy means set apart, separate, separate, or separated from the world system. It doesn't mean you go to a different planet. You still live among the worldly people of today. However, you do not let that worldliness and secularism infiltrate you. You get rid of all the secular, vain, sinful music. You get rid of all the secular, vain, sinful movies that you used to like. The music you used to like, you throw it out. I tell you, when I first got saved, and same with a, a, you know, a good friend and a, a friend of mine that was really a good mentor in my life way back in the early days, both of us, we have we just made a big bonfire, okay? And whatever we didn't burn, we we smashed and totally destroyed and threw it in the garbage. We're talking about books. We're talking about CDs uh, or uh, cassette tapes back and then back in those days. Actually, cassette tapes did exist. Um, uh, clothing that had promoted different kinds of people or bands or groups or you know things that uh, was just not very godly or holy at all. We we got rid of everything. It was, uh, you know, oh, you might say it cost thousands of dollars. Yes, it did. But let me tell you, it was way worth it. Way worth it. Uh, when I first got saved, I had nightmares every single night until I destroyed these things. I didn't even know what, what was causing the nightmares. But after I destroyed all the posters that I had hanging on my wall, all of the um, clothing and books and music and all this other stuff that I had that just w was promoting things that was against God's law, when I destroyed all that stuff, the nightmares stopped. You know, because the enemy, uh, evil spirits can attach them, it, themselves to things, to material things. I mean, today in, in, in the world, uh, witches know these things. Real witches know these things and people who are involved in necromancy and this kind of stuff, which is, by the way, forbidden by God because of the fact that you are inviting evil spirits. And it's just it's it's absolutely forbidden by God to do or to get involved in any of these things. However, even the people that are involved in these things know that evil spirits or spirits, they might call them familiar spirits, uh, are attached to certain objects. So you got to get rid of these objects in your life, uh, be it um, whatever, whatever it is. I mean, uh, pictures, uh, books, um, whatever it is that you have in your life that is a channel or a, uh, an item that's not uh, really conducive to your walk with God. Uh, that is, or, or in specifically against the uh, the word of God completely, uh, spirit, spiritualism and New Age stuff and all kinds of other stuff that's against God's word and His uh, instructions and and such. So you got to really completely purge yourself. Okay, you got to really count the cost of what it what it means to really be a true Christian, a follower of Jesus. Let's read on, verse twenty nine. Talking about the tower, uh, perhaps when he has laid the foundation, is not able to finish it. And everyone who begins to, everyone who sees begins to mock him, saying, "This man began to build, but wasn't able to finish." Or what king, as he goes to encounter another king in war, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with ten thousand to meet him who comes against him with twenty thousand? Or else, while the other is yet a, gr a great way off, he sends an envoy and asks for conditions of peace. So, therefore, whoever of you doesn't renounce all that he has. Let me read this again. So, therefore, whoever of you who doesn't renounce all that he has. Get that? all that he has. If you don't renounce all that you have, he can't be my disciple, it says. He can't be my disciple. 
You got to renounce all that you have. What's that mean? It means all of your material possessions. That means all of your, basically, your money. I mean, not not to say that it's 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 bad to have some money, but a lot of you people you worship money. A lot of you people you hold too tight to money. You need to give to the poor more. Okay. Um, Perhaps God wants you to give up. I mean, you gotta you gotta completely die to self, and you, and you gotta say it's it's now life has got nothing to do with me. It's got everything to do with serving God and serving others. It's, it's got everything to do with number one, loving God, which means doing what's right in His sight, not what's right in your sight, and then loving others, which can include, by the way, rebuking people of their sin. It says in in uh, in, in the book of Leviticus, "Thou shalt love your neighbor." You shall not suffer him to sin. If you really love him, you're not going to say, oh, you're, I understand, you know, you're, a little bit of sin is okay. No one's perfect. That's not what it says. You need to rebuke him of your sin. You don't, you don't, do not let him sin. If you really love him, you don't want them to sin. I know I spoke about a lot of very heavy things today in this teaching, and uh, I know those of you who've made it this far in the teaching, you are, uh, you know, congratulations. Um, you are, uh, you probably made it a lot further than a lot of other people uh, would make it. And it's, it just goes to show how honest you are and how hungry you are with God. So I encourage you to walk out that, that life of holiness, of repentance, of getting into the scriptures, reading the scriptures, reading God's word, asking God to show you uh, what it means, how it applies in the, in the full general scheme of things. You know, doing your research, doing your research. And as uh, Jesus said, if you ask and keep asking, you will receive. If you knock and keep knocking, you will. the door will be open to you. If you seek and keep seeking, you will find. So as you call upon God, as it says in the book of Jeremiah, may God show you great and mighty things. May the eyes of your understanding, may the eyes of your, uh, of your spirit be opened and may great revelation come to you and be wonderfully blessed in your walk with God. Thanks again.